the camera, the filmmaker's paintbrush. The camera's movement, its placement, the composition of the frame, the lighting, all combine to tell a visual story. <clears throat> do that again. Yeah, okay. You know what you can do for me? on the, Just on the cover sheet, forget about what I said before. I have a special problem in this. Give me a faster case. All right. Just on the intro. Okay. Volume 2, The Camera, The Filmmaker's Paintbrush. The camera's movement, its placement, the composition of the frame, the lighting, all combine to tell a visual story. We have selected a few sequences from the great masters, each with a distinctly different visual style and a different application. These and other illustrated examples are analyzed in detail in the written study guide. <clears throat> Sergei Parajanov's Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors, doing it one more time. Sergei Parajanov's Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors from the Soviet Union. Parajanov retells the Romeo and Juliet legend through the story of young Ivan and the violence of life in the Carpathian Mountains 100 years ago. There was absolutely no evidence that out of the USSR and its almost static film production of the last 20 years would burst forth one of the freest, most flexible, yet disciplined cameras of our generation. The handheld camera is Parajanov's basic tool. It enables him to move quickly from one character to the next and yet maintain a sense of their spatial relationship to each other doing that last thing again. I didn't give you very much pause. <clears throat> the handheld camera is Parajanov's basic tool. It enables him to move quickly from one character to the next and yet maintain a sense of their spatial relationship to each other. Can you do that again, please? I got the uh, Mac truck out. Okay. Well, we're still getting it now. Okay. Go on. Go on. The handheld camera is Parajanov's basic tool. It enables him to move quickly from one character to the next and yet maintain a sense of their spatial relationship to each other. <clears throat> Jean Cocteau's Beauty and the Beast. Beauty has not yet met the owner of the strange castle in which he is hostage. Curiosity leads her into the garden. Cocteau took the great Flemish painters of the Renaissance as a model for his light sources, his costumes, and his composition. <coughs> Which, as the soundtrack drops out, complete, out completely, leaving only the camera and lighting to, and, and light to set the mood. <coughs> you, you want to keep running, or What's I don't know if I got composition. All right, all right let me do it again. Jean Cocteau's Beauty and the Beast. Beauty has not yet met the owner of the strange castle in which he is hostage. Curiosity leads her into the garden. Cocteau took the great Flemish painters of the Renaissance as a model for his light sources, his costumes, and his composition. Watch as the soundtrack drops out completely, leaving only the camera and lighting to set the mood. <clears throat> Les deux Anglais. Anne and... Les deux. Les deux. <clears throat> Anne and Muriel, two English girls. Les deux Anglais. Francois Truffaut's film of a novel by Henri Rocher. As in Rocher's Jules and Jim, again it is a story of three people in love. Claude and Anne have secretly gone to the country to be alone for the very first time. In order to maintain the intimacy of this scene, Truffaut has chosen to keep the audience and his camera at a distance. Truffaut timed the traveling camera exactly so that the background and the action of the actors blend. <clears throat> the Rocking Horse Winner D.H. Lawrence's... Do it again. 
The Rocking Horse Winner, D.H. Lawrence's strange and wonderful story of human greed and the need for love and understanding. He rides in desperation, a vain hope that his second sight in picking a racing winner can somehow stop the haunting whispers that fill the house. Money, need money, need money. Here, Desmond Dickinson, who photographed Olivier's Hamlet, uses a subjective camera to bring the viewer into the boy's mind as he is withdrawing from reality. You picking up trucks? <clears throat> yeah. A little bit. You want to play that? You want to do that again? Yeah, All right. Okay. The Rocking Horse Winner. D.H. Lawrence's strange and wonderful story of human greed and the need for love and understanding. He rides in desperation, a vain hope that his second sight in picking a racing winner can somehow stop the haunting whispers that fill the house. Money, need money, need money. Here, Desmond Dickinson, who photographed Olivier's Hamlet, uses a subjective camera to bring the viewer into the boy's mind as he is withdrawing from reality. I want to play that back yeah, to just... Try that here a Look, the way you're doing this is so perfect. Rolling. <clears throat> Rolling. Alfred Hitchcock's The Lady Vanishes. Hitchcock has said you let the audience find out a bomb is under the table, but keep the knowledge from the characters in the story. Do that again, I rattle the fucking table. <clears throat> Alfred Hitchcock's The Lady Vanishes. Hitchcock has said you let the audience find out a bomb is under the table, but keep the knowledge from the characters in the story. The suspense will mount as the audience waits for the explosion. In this case, the bomb is two drugged glasses of wine. The order the order of us. In this case, the bomb is two drugged glasses of wine. The audience already knows that Paul Lucas, the doctor, is the villain. Hitchcock's camera controls the wine glasses, and the wine glasses control the scene. That again. <clears throat> Hitchcock's camera controls the wine glasses, and the wine glasses control the scene. <clears throat> David O. Selznick's The Most Dangerous Game. The subjective camera and the chase. On the very same set on which King Kong was shot, Joel McCrae and Fay Ray flee the Baron Zaroff, Leslie Banks. Baron Zaroff, a master sportsman, is bored with big game hunting. On his island, he hunts. Oh, balls, do it again. <clears throat> Baron Zaroff, a master sportsman, is bored with big game hunting. On his island, he hunts human beings. The camera movement through the foliage thrusts the viewer directly into the chase. <coughs> Ingmar Bergman's The Silence. Two sisters and the small son of one are strangers in a country which we the all balls. <coughs> Ingmar Bergman's The Silence. Two sisters and the small son of one are strangers in a country which we, the audience, realize is involved in an unidentified war. Undefined war. <clears throat> Two sisters and the small son of one are strangers in a country which we, the audience, realize is involved in an undefined war, which Bergman only symbolizes. It could be World War II or a war in the future. <clears throat> I heard a truck. I'll do it again. Two sisters and the small son of one are strangers in a country which we, the audience, realize is involved in an undefined war, which Bergman only symbolizes. It could be World War II or a war in the future. We find our actors do not speak or understand the language. However, despite the human problems, the impulse to understand, to learn a few words in a different language, to grow is the underlying thrust of Bergman's The Silence. 
Now I'm getting Chuck again right now. Jean-Luc, Jean-Luc, good time. Go ahead. Jean-Luc Godard's Weekend. Godard is one of the great innovators of the 60s. His film, Breathless, changed the entire theory of film editing. In Weekend, Godard shot this 360-degree scene. It lasts almost eight minutes on the screen without a single cut. The actor's cues had to be carefully rehearsed to match the camera movement. By the end of the 60s, Godard seemed bored with filmmaking, but he continued to experiment with his camera, sometimes disastrously, but always with imagination. Even in this scene, after completing the full circle pen, Godard decided that... Even in this scene, after completing the full circle pen, Godard decided to go further. He reversed direction and circled back the other way. Many of Godard's ideas, many of Godard's ideas have been picked up and used by other filmmakers. In fact, this very same shot, a 360 degree pan starting from a piano, was used effectively in five easy pieces. Also on Twilight Zone, we did it. I didn't know that. <clears throat> from inside a phone booth. We return to the wedding scene from Parajanov's Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors, with the use of the camera carried to a new dimension. Lighting, movement, and lens selection combined to convey the mood of the procession. You read that last I'd be delighted to. You didn't know that that was the same thing. Lighting, movement, and lens selection combined no, 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 to... from the top, the ancestors with the use. You know, you'd split all right, it up there. All right for you, Jeff. We return to the wedding scene from Parajanov's Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors with the use of the camera carried to a new dimension. Lighting, movement, and lens selection combined to convey the mood of the procession. Beautiful. Okay, kind of good. You know, it's a funny thing, but in the entire picture, music and sound, <laughs> Music and sound. The filmmaker's method for setting mood, pacing, and style. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Paper noise over That's me going paper noise. Do the the intro again. Volume. It's a little faster. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Say when. When. Volume four. Music and sound. Music and sound, the filmmaker's method for setting mood, pacing, and style. What the viewer hears on the soundtrack greatly influences what he sees and the way he sees it. We have selected a few sequences from the great masters, each with a distinctly different style and a different application. These and other illustrated examples are analyzed in detail in the written study guide. The nightmare sequence from Ingmar Bergman's Wild Strawberries. Sound, both music and effects, and the absence of sound, are major factors in setting the mood of Bergman's drama. In Wild Strawberries, Bergman chose Victor Seastrom, the great Swedish director of the early 20s, to play an old man whose entire life is reviewed in a series of dreams. The nightmare is the first episode. Each succeeding dream returns to an earlier point in the past. On-camera sound sources seem to give life to inanimate objects. Akira Kurosawa's first color motion picture, Dodas Kaden. As in Maxim Gorky's The Lower Depths, Kurosawa examines humanity through a series of stories dealing with the lives of the poor the people of the slums. His connecting thread is a simple-minded boy who spends his entire day running an imaginary trolley. Kurosawa chooses to have the audience hear the sounds that are in the boy's mind. The title Kodes Kaden itself is the boy's bad reading. <clears throat> 
I beg pardon? That's a smart ass. The title Codes Kadan. Do. Dodes. Yeah. The title Dodes Kaden itself is the boy's imitation, still bad reading. <clears throat> The title Dodes Kaden itself is the boy's imitation of the sound of the trolley. One more time. The title Dodes Kaden itself is the boy's imitation of the sound of the trolley. <clears throat> Alexander Nevsky. The battle scene between the invading Teutonic Knights and the Russian army directed by Sergei Eisenstein, the grand master of the art of film montage. I don't blame you. The battle scene between the invading Teutonic Knights and the Russian army, directed by Sergei Eisenstein, the grand master of the art of film montage. <clears throat> The original score for Alexander Nevsky was written for the film by Sergei Prokofiev. The entire battle scene was choreographed, was choreographed, was flagellated, was, was He did a lot of dancing. He did a lot of dancing as well as choreographed. The entire battle scene was choreographed by Eisenstein. Stein? You say Stein? Yeah. The entire battle scene was choreographed by Eisenstein. He worked with a series of drawings that he was later to match exactly with action. To these movements, Prokofiev wrote his music. Eisenstein and the Russians planned Alexander Nevsky, showing the defeat of the German army as a direct warning to Adolf Hitler, a warning that was to be disregarded. Did you hear that? I heard a clunk. In yeah, that was this thing right here. <clears throat> I'll do the last two paragraphs. Prokofiev, Prokofiev. Give me Prokofiev again, Jeff, will you? Prokofiev. Okay, Prokofiev. Alexander Nevsky. The battle scene between the invading Teutonic Knights and the Russian army, directed by Sergei Eisenstein, the Grand Master of the... <clears throat> okay. Alexander Nevsky. The battle scene between the invading Teutonic Knights and the Russian army, directed by Sergei Eisenstein, the grand master of the art of film montage. Hold it a second. I hear it. I cut it when, you know. We should block off the road. That's the only way. <laughs> That's okay, what I was trying to Okay. Alexander Nevsky. The battle scene between the invading Teutonic Knights and the Russian army, directed by Sergei Eisenstein, the grand master of the art of film montage. The original score for Alexander Nevsky was written for the film by Sergei Prokofiev. The entire battle scene was choreographed by Eisenstein. He worked with a series of drawings that he was later to match exactly with action. To these movements, Prokofiev wrote his music. Eisenstein and the Russians planned Alexander Nevsky, showing the defeat of the German army as a direct warning to Adolf Hitler, a warning that was to be disregarded. <clears throat> hold, hold it just I know, I hear. Peter Lorre, as the child murderer in Fritz Lang's M. The whistle tune becomes a prelude to murder and conditions the audience's reaction until it dominates the film, Blewett. <clears throat> the whistle tune becomes a prelude to murder and conditions the audience's reaction until it dominates the film. M taunts the press and manages to elude the police and an enraged underworld, both of whom are hunting him. It is the whistle overheard by a blind man that finally gives away his identity. Do it again. It is the whistle overheard by a blind man 
that finally gives away his identity. And now the classic Dead of Night. Four different directors tell six tales of the supernatural in this extraordinary film. Do it again, hit the table. Four different directors tell six tales of the supernatural in this extraordinary film. Do it again, we have to pick it up. We're still getting it. Not too bad, but okay. Four different directors tell six tales of the supernatural in this extraordinary film. The story in which sound dominates is Basil Dreardon's Blue Vlodge, Vlodge Gom Bearden. The story in which sound dominates is Basil Dearden's Room for One More. He uses just music and effects to separate reality from an unexplainable experience. Dearden uses just music and effects to separate reality from an unexplainable experience. There's an echo in this room because the last two yeah. paragraphs are identical. You notice one is he and one is Dearden. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice that. Jeremil Jerry's. I didn't uh, get that okay. one. Hold it. Cut, 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 cut. cut. Valerie, from Czechoslovakian director Jaromil Jeresh. It's Jaromil Jeresh. They're both lies. <laughs> Valerie, from Czechoslovakian director Jaromil Jeresh. The moods and rhythms of the score composed by Lubos Fisi Plajfragam Sligi Gravazugu. Who does Lubo Fizer there? Lubos Fisi. Okay. Lubos Fizer. The moods and rhythms of the score composed by Lubos Fizer counterpoint the story of a young girl's coming of age and awakening to the world around her. Is that beautiful? Oh, Lubos and Yaromil and, and all of you. Once, uh, the, uh, story of young if that's what you want, Jeff, okay. The moods and rhythms of the score composed by Lubos Pfizer counterpoint the story of a young girl's coming of age and awakening to the world around her. Period. Okay. I yeah. said around her. What the fuck more do you want from all me? All right, cut. Cut the thing, please. Volume 2. Volume 2, the camera. The filmmaker's paintbrush. The camera's movement, its placement, the composition of the frame, the lighting, all combine to tell a visual story. We have selected a few sequences from the great masters, each with a distinctly different visual style and a different application. These and other illustrated examples are analyzed in detail in the written study guide. Swell. Okay, swell? Okay. Volume 4, Music and Sound. Do it again. Volume 4, Music and Sound. Music and Sound. The filmmaker's method for setting mood, pacing, and style. What the viewer hears on the soundtrack greatly influences what he sees and the way he sees it. We have selected a few sequences from the great masters, each with a distinctly different style and a different application. These and other illustrated examples are analyzed in detail in the written study guide. Is that? Huh? Want me to do that last paragraph?